We have a new human study concluding that glycine and NAC supplements, they improve and reverse multiple age-associated abnormalities, including glutathione, to promote health in aging humans. That is an incredibly exciting prospect, so let's dive into the paper and see if it stacks up. I'll also share with you at the end of the video what I do with glycine and NAC supplements. First, we need some background. It used to be thought that all oxidants were bad, where progressively our mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of our cells, they slowly become damaged and dysfunctional. They start to release more and more oxidants, further damaging the mitochondria and the rest of the cell. So we used to think that we want to do everything in our power to reduce oxidants and reduce that damage. But the experiments haven't lived up to the hype, and if anything, it's the opposite. In mice, for example, when they were genetically altered to create more oxidants, it did not accelerate aging. Instead, we've now got a more nuanced approach where we're trying to balance oxidants and antioxidants. Let me explain. Instead of always thinking that oxidants are bad, we can now start to think of them as stress-induced survival signals. So as we age, the levels of oxidants, they increase in an attempt to maintain survival until they betray their original purpose. So what the oxidants are doing is trying to stimulate to the cell that they need to become more efficient, that we need to repair the mitochondria. But eventually the oxidants become so great that they start damaging the cell instead of signaling to the cell to become more efficient. Instead, we're trying to hit that optimal balance between oxidants and antioxidants. And at the heart of all of this is an antioxidant called glutathione, which is the critical regulator for oxidative stress and immune function. And in humans, we can see that the levels of glutathione it stays relatively constant until about the age of 45, at which point it starts to fall off a cliff and the oxidants start winning. Now, glycine and NAC, they are building blocks for glutathione. So by supplementing with glycine and NAC, we can allow ourselves the chance to rebuild their glutathione stores and maintain that optimal oxidant to antioxidant balance. So that's the idea that this new human study is exploring. It starts by acknowledging that aging is associated with a glutathione deficiency and elevated oxidants. In a previous study that supplemented with glycine and NAC to rebuild glutathione, so this study ran for two weeks, it did correct the glutathione deficiency, so we could see that the glutathione it was rebuilt. Furthermore, it improved the mitochondrial function and insulin resistance. But that was only a pilot two-week study. This one is a randomized placebo-controlled study for 16 weeks, and they were looking at glutathione concentrations, insulin resistance, inflammation, and physical function. They enrolled 24 older adults and 12 younger adults, and to be included in the study, the older adults had to be between 61 and 80 years old, and they needed to be overweight. And this was done because in the rodent studies, they could see that glycine and NAC supplements resulted in weight loss, so they wanted to make sure that the older adults in the study didn't lose too much weight. The authors assessed 241 people to see if they met the eligibility criteria to be included in the study, but only 24 could be included, and that's a red flag. It means that the study is highly restrictive, so the findings are not generalizable to the wider population. Glycine and NAC were each dosed at 100 milligrams per kilogram, which is quite a high dose. So for an 80 kilogram person, they are taking 8 grams of both glycine and NAC. The primary outcome of the study was what were the glutathione concentrations in the muscle. So jumping to the results, before the study started, we can see that both groups had a glutathione concentration in the muscle of 2.4. But after the 16 weeks, the group that took the glycine and NAC supplements, their glutathione skyrocketed all the way up to 6 6.3, which is very close to a younger adult range of 7. So the glycine and NAC supplements, they almost fully corrected the deficiency in glutathione, which is very exciting. Because we can see with the correction in glutathione levels, the mitochondrial function it improved in the glycine and NAC group. So because the powerhouses of the cells, the mitochondria, are working more efficiently, it also resulted in a faster gait speed. We can see this here. Before the study started, the glycine and NAC group, they could walk about 1.1 meters per second, whereas after the 16 weeks, they could walk 1.3. So that doesn't sound like much, but this is only 16 weeks, and the fact that we're seeing any improvement at all is very encouraging. Finally, we've got significant improvements in inflammation levels, with high sensitivity CRP reducing by 25%. Importantly, during the study, the participants did not report any adverse events with the glycine and NAC supplements. Overall, from this human study, we can see that glycine and NAC supplements in older adults significantly improved and corrected the glutathione deficiency. It improved mitochondrial function, 
physical function, waist circumference, and some of the signs of aging. But that begs the question, if we're trying to correct our glutathione levels, why not just supplement with glutathione? Well, glutathione supplements, they're generally unstable, so by the time that you take a glutathione supplement, most of it would have broken down and won't be absorbed into our cells. But there's a bigger problem at hand. Some supplement companies have developed what's called liposomal glutathione. So this is stable, and it can be directly absorbed by the cells, which is a huge issue. Remember, we're trying to strike the perfect balance between oxidants and antioxidants. So if we're using liposomal glutathione that can directly get into the cells, then the cells cannot regulate the amount of antioxidants that they've got. And it's critically essential to understand that each tissue, it maintains different amounts of glutathione based on its metabolic demands. This demand is dynamic and variable, which is why the cells, they must be able to regulate their own glutathione synthesis. And we absolutely need to make sure that glutathione supplements do not mess with this process. If we do mess with this process and excessively reduce the amount of oxidants in our cells, this is a phenomenon known as reductive stress. Cells have to maintain a delicate balance between lowering oxidants and simultaneously avoiding reductive stress. Again, we're striking that perfect balance. And this balance can be easily upset. For example, if we've got excess administration of NAC alone or glutathione alone to worms, it results in accelerating aging. This is completely different to glycine and NAC supplements because all we are doing is providing the cells with the building blocks for glutathione. We are not messing with the regulation of glutathione. And this study included a group of younger adults because it wanted to make sure that the glycine and NAC supplements didn't lower the oxidative markers in the younger adults too much. And that's exactly what they find. And therefore they avoided reductive stress. Again, we are allowing the body to strike that optimal balance. I find this a very promising study, but there are a few important caveats. It's a small study, there was a lot of exclusion and inclusion criteria, so it's not generalizable to the public. It's also using massive dosages, and it is a relatively short time frame. But I'm looking forward to longer term, larger studies that don't have such restrictive criteria to be included. I want to make sure we've got data that we can use for the general public to make our health decisions. I also think it would be particularly interesting to see if the dose should be adjusted depending on the age of the person because for me it seems more likely that an 80 year old person needs further help to restore their glutathione levels compared to say a 50 year old person. Personally I plan to take both glycine and NAC from the age of 45 years old at one and a half grams each per day and I'd probably increase that to twice daily dosing when I reach the age of 55. Really though we've only scratched the surface on supplement research so make sure to check out this next video here where we have a look at why the research suggests that most people should use creatine supplements. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization and to benefit from their ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.